Welcome to this Monday Thursday service. This is the uh, uh, first time since I've been here that we've done a Monday Thursday service, so this is fantastic. Um, tonight, let me just uh, highlight a few things that are going on so that you're ready for it. Um, as we've started the service, just in uh, just patiently quiet, uh, there are a few elements uh, tonight that you need to be aware of. We're continuing on. We've been reading through the Gospel of Luke through the whole season of Lent on Wednesday nights, and we left off last night right at chapter 26, and so we're going to pick it up uh, from there and include that in the readings uh, this evening. And then tomorrow night, when we're together again, we're going to continue on in the Gospel of Matthew through the Good Friday readings and the crucifixion. And so this evening, as we read through Matthew's gospel, there's a few things that aren't in there, but we're wanting to insert them into the story tonight. Uh, one is, uh, in John's gospel, Jesus gives a new commandment. And the word new, that's when we talk about Monday, Thursday, commandment, uh, this idea of a new commandment. Uh, does anybody know what that new commandment is? Love one another as... As I have loved you. That's the new part of it. See, the old one was love your neighbor as yourself, which is pretty good, uh, except if maybe you don't love yourself quite enough, and it's going to be really hard to be kind to others if you're not kind to yourself. And so Jesus decided that the, that the framework and, and the model that he wanted to have was the love that he had for us, that we would also love one another with that love. So that's a new commandment, right? Love one another as I have loved you, which means also that we need to be a people who are receptive to the love of God. And what Jesus did in demonstrating the love of God to his disciples, again in John's gospel, is he washed their feet. He did the, the job of the lowly servant, came alongside and their smelly, dirty feet, and he washed them. And so tonight, we're going to wash some feet. Now, don't worry. If you're here, we're not going to wash your feet. Uh, that would be good if we did that. But we've got uh, two people already chosen uh, to have their feet washed here. And we're going to do it as a demonstration. Not, not a demonstration of how to wash feet, but rather a demonstration that just says, this is what Jesus did for us. And by observing and watching and listening, maybe that would be a, a, a way that we might think about how we could wash the feet of others or, or do the kind of lowly tasks that demonstrate love. 
And so uh, during the foot washing, I just invite you to observe, to see, and to consider, are there any tasks that maybe God wants you to be about in the world? It's so interesting to me that, that Jesus defines leadership. Jesus defines the greatness of who he is uh, by taking that posture of a servant and serving others. And, and so tonight, this is about as liturgical as I get once a year. I'll put on a stole. Occasionally, I'll put on a robe, but not tonight. And, and for me, uh, the stole has always been a reminder that Jesus wrapped the towel about his waist and served others. And so tonight, I wear this just as a reminder for that. And also as a reminder, to get, as we gather at the Lord's table. So we've got foot washing and we have the Lord's Supper. Now, the Lord's Supper, we're going to take, as we read the scriptures directly from Matthew, let those be the words of institution. Let those words of Jesus set the tone for the breaking of bread and the pouring of the cup tonight. And then we're going to invite you to come forward to receive. We'll be serving communion by intinction. And that simply means that you uh, break a piece of bread off and then dip it into the cup and receive in that way. Um, if you're... Uh, uncomfortable with that tonight, then you can come forward and I will pray a prayer over you if you just simply fold your arms across your chest. So no necessity that you have to partake of this way, uh, whatever you're most comfortable in. But part of it is just a reminder of our community, our, our life together, our, our place at the table of the Lord invited by Jesus to come and participate. And so that's what this evening is all about. It's really about, and what I want to invite you to do is to just be still and to watch and to listen and participate and try to sense how is God present in our time together. As we conclude the service, we will conclude without a benediction because the story continues. And so the house lights will come down We'll be able to sit for a few moments in silence. As, as they come back up, that's kind of the cue to make your way out. And then we'll gather again tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in this very place in anticipation for the story to continue to unfold in preparation for the celebration of resurrection on Easter. So with that, we dive into the story. Let me offer a prayer. Lord God, thank you for gathering us together tonight. Thank you for your presence here with us. We pray that in the washing of feet and the pouring of the cup and the breaking of bread, that we might sense your presence here with us. We know, Lord, that it's the reassurance of your love that gives us courage to live our lives in faith in the world around us, demonstrating the love that we have received by sharing it with others. And so we ask for your grace to be upon us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we begin Matthew chapter 26. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to, the, to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the place of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment. And she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. 
A prophet woman broke a jar by love's divine appointing. With rare perfume, she filled the room, presiding and anointing. A prophet woman broke a jar, the sneers of scorn defying. With rare perfume, she filled the room, preparing Christ for dying. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man, and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve.
got the story. And while they were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they become great, became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood, which is the covenant shed in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. I invite you as you're ready and prepared. Uh, we won't be escorted by ushers, so it's simply in your own timing to make your way forward. I'll break a piece of bread off hand it to you, and then if you dip it into the cup, you can receive communion in that way. Let us break bread together on our knees.
Amen. Continuing on in the reading. When they sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Thank you. 
Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up and let us be going. See, my betrayers is at hand. While he was sleeping, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs. From the chief priests and the elders of the people, now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all of who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will once send me more than 12 legions of angels? And how then the scriptures can be filled? which say it must happen in this way. As the hour Jesus said to the crowds, have you come with the swords and the clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me, but all this was taken place so the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you. From now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemy. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is that that struck you? I stood by the fire near the place they had taken my Lord. I saw him there with shackled hands, wondering what was in store. The people all around started looking my way. They were closing in on me. And I said anything just so that I could go free.
Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus at the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. What wondrous love is this, O my soul, O my soul? What wondrous love is this, O my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to Bear the dreadful cross for my soul, for my soul. To bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sending down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Laid aside his crown 